something happens as you pass through your 30s and then your 40s with hints that your body is changing. You're gaining weight and fighting cravings. You're no longer bouncing out of bed the way you used to. You notice symptoms like bloating, poor sleep, brain fog, and mood swings. You're feeling old before your time and just plain off. For the vast majority of us, these changes are agonizing, frustrating, and scary. I get it. I really do. Because of my own experience and my work with countless women like you, you're right to feel this way, and you're far from alone. But take heart. It is never too late to get healthier and regain your looks, health, mental clarity, and energy. Heather is a good example. When she came to me at age 54, having entered menopause four years prior, she was extremely frustrated. Nothing ever worked for me, she said in a low, dejected voice. I've eaten mini meals, I've counted calories, I've exercised like a maniac, but the weight just won't come off. I hate how this extra 20 pounds makes me feel so old and tired. Honestly, I've lost hope. Heather had even resorted to taking a drug called fentramine. It is similar to an amphetamine or upper. It stimulates the central nervous system, nerves and brain, which accelerates your heart rate and blood pressure and curbs your appetite. It has a lot of scary side effects ranging from mild to moderate, insomnia, headaches, dizziness, dangerously high blood pressure, chest pain, and shortness of breath. This kind of struggle is simply not necessary. As Heather and I talked, I guided her through my philosophy about how best to lose weight and navigate menopause and do it naturally without the use of prescription drugs to lose weight. I explained to her that every part of my program is designed to ease her symptoms and get her back to feeling younger and more vibrant again. Heather perked up and was ready to give the program her all. She adjusted her nutrition, and she slowly started intermittent fasting. Lo and behold, she lost 10 pounds in the first eight weeks and kept going, without feeling deprived, hungry, or fatigued. Today, she has more energy and confidence than she ever thought possible at her age. Like Heather, perhaps you have followed the usual pieces of advice, counting calories, eating small meals throughout the day, and having breakfast. All those lose weight actions in which you've been schooled. Maybe you managed to drop a few pounds, but then you plateaued, yo-yo dieted, or couldn't keep the weight off. Or maybe you acquired other worrisome symptoms. You just don't sleep as well, for example, and it takes longer to get going in the morning. Perhaps you have too many aches and pains, or you can't think as clearly as you once could, or can't remember facts and events. It seems like your body is changing right before your eyes. These are terrible, exasperating predicaments, and it's easy just to give up, even though you want to feel fantastic again. It never ceases to amaze me how much bad advice, under the guise of quote-unquote wisdom, women are given about their health and weight loss, such as my personal fave, exercise more, eat less. That absolutely did not work for me and had the opposite intended effect. I gained weight, couldn't take it off, and generally felt unhealthy. Important, do not beat yourself up. You haven't failed. Conventional wisdom has failed you. That wisdom centers around the following dogma. Bad dogma number one. Calories in, calories out. This is what matters. If you're endlessly counting calories to drop pounds or manage your weight, you may be worrying about the wrong thing. It's the quality of the protein, carbohydrates, and fat we eat, not counting calories. That is an important key to fat loss, weight control, and health. This involves getting enough of the nutrients you need, including vitamins, minerals, and fiber from your food choices. Poor quality foods, namely processed carbohydrates like candy, chips, soda, and commercially baked goods, contribute to weight gain and other symptoms, but not because they have a lot of calories, is that they set into motion a series of reactions that make your body store fat. These foods break down rapidly into sugar. In response, your pancreas churns out higher levels of the hormone insulin. Insulin is like fertilizer for your fat cells. It tells your cells to grab calories and convert them into fat. The other problem is that when we cut calories, the body fights back. Our metabolism slows down in order to keep food and energy around longer, and you begin to feel hungrier. This situation is a no-win for weight control, and it throws our hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin, out of whack. More about these hormones in upcoming chapters.